not boast and he falls the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from God. But it's earthly, unspiritual, demonic, for a jealous and selfish ambition exists. There will be disorder in every man practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. The word of the Lord.
parents, guardians, and well-wishers, we are going to invite you. You could sit to sing the same song while an offering will be taken up for the Welfare and Environmental Fund. Thank you.
Let us pray God's blessing on the offering. Father, we thank you that you are God of provision. And we pray, God, that as we have given back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with, we pray, God, that it will be used for the advancement of this school. We thank you for your resource. And we pray, God, that as we have given to you, you will take it, bless it, and use it for the good of this institution. This we pray for Christ's sake. Amen.
He said, and I quote, I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. No matter how I bet that evening, when I counted my scan to store. For life is a just employer. He gives you what you ask. And once you have set the wages, then you must bear the tax. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn this made, that any wage had asked of life, life would not willingly pay. And the message, that's where it ends, the message is simple. The message is that anything you want to achieve, you can. Right? It's a function of how much effort, how much commitment, how much drive, how much enthusiasm, right? how much you're willing to put into achieving that goal. And I see this play out so many times in so many different ways. I watched a tennis match yesterday. I don't know how many of you watched Wimbledon. And I saw Rafael Nadal, right, with a torn score. In the second set, prevail in a 9 10 the match over five sets. And it was just about a mindset, just about an attitude. As he said, his, his father and his sister were calling him to come off the court because they said, you are clearly injured and you can't play anywhere near full capacity. And he said he refused because he didn't want to lose. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, students, we all came not to lose, we came to win. That's why we are here. We came to win. But, as I said, you know, I won't, I won't be too long in this. Just two things I want to leave with you. Right? There is a framework that I came across some years ago and that I have personally used and I have recommended to many persons who have used it and told me they have found it extremely useful. And I'm going to spend three minutes just sharing it with you. It is called the Five A's Framework. I want you to remember, five A's. Very simple. The first A is to aspire. Right? And what do I mean by aspire? As the aspiration is what is where we want to go, what we want to achieve. And I remember a gentleman by the name of Nairo, Nairo and Muti, who was the founder of a company called Infosys, which started as a baby and grew into a global giant, said, and I quote, an aspiration is the main fuel for progress. An aspiration converts ordinary people into extraordinary achievements. Can you imagine what it does for extraordinary people? The second A is to assess. And this really answers the question, what are the things we need to do if we are going to achieve the aspiration? And in that answer that question, we have to be honest with ourselves. As a man in the mirror moment, what skills, capabilities, and competences do we need? What, what connections, what contacts, what knowledge do we need to possess or to acquire if we are going to achieve our aspiration? And one thing about the aspiration, all oh, these people, it must be unreasonable. You hear what I said? It must be unreasonable, but not unachievable. You want it to be unreasonable because they want it to make you sweat. Right? They want it to get you excited and to get the adrenaline flowing. The third A is to architect, which is really to make a plan. Plan of action. How are you going to achieve these things? What are the things we're going to do? And then the fourth A, very quickly, is to act. That's where most people fail. They make all the plans, they make, you know, develop all kinds of initiatives, but they never act on them because, you know what acting takes? It takes discipline, it takes commitment. And the fifth A is to advance, right? Which is to recognize that it is not an event, it is a process. So you have to start it over and over again as you move to the next level. So I want to leave those five days with you and to encourage you to use them as a framework to guide your own development in this, in your life journey as you go forward. And in closing remarks, I 
I'll leave you with another quote because I love quotations. And this one is from an architect by the name of Daniel Burnham, an American architect. When he said, and ties back into the whole concept of aspiration, he said, make no little plans, they have no magic to store in blood. Make big plans, aim high in hope and work, recognizing that a noble, logical diagram, once drawn, will never die, but like a living thing, will keep on asserting itself with ever increasing consistency. So, Graduates, your future is in your hands and you can become anything you want to be if you want it bad enough and put in the effort behind it. Thank you.
That's our whole like screen that we're executing, right? Yeah. So give another round of applause. Okay, the lady that went way to the girlfriend. So our principal, Dr. Marcos Spalding.
members from the business community. We are always so grateful for your support, for reaching out to us. Our diligent vice principals, dean of discipline, guidance counselors, members of the academic staff, our HODs, our coordinators, subject teachers, form teachers, faculty advisors of the various clubs and societies, Mrs. Peter King, the SBA soldier, I leave that right there. Our administrative staff and ancillary staff, we could not do it without you, and we applaud you. Our coaches and faculty advisors, we sometimes overlook them, but they continue to add great value to the Flatlands brand. Mr. Ryan Reed and Ms. Annette Daly. Ms. Annette Daly actually has a niece who is graduating today as well. This year, we defended our under-15 netball All-Ireland Championship. Three of those students are graduating with academic honors, and I'll just ask those students to start. that when you do sports, you're fully done. Rubbish. Not at Glenmuir High School. Coach Andrew Pierce, Dave Brown, Mr. Robbie for football. Our under-14 team got to the finals of the competition recently. Our the Costa Cup team, while not advancing, defeated Clarendon College 1-0. And to date, I see that we won the cup. and who are footballers. I want the footballers to stand up. <laughs> Sheldon, you have joined others in disrupting the narrative once more that we're not fully done, we're fully bright. And we know that you're going to be doing well in your key subject that you sat recently, just to give you a little glimpse into what he has accomplished so far. Congratulations. We must lift up our table tennis coach, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark is a past teacher, and he continues to work with table tennis. And this year, we were second in all categories of the competition. Sean Thomas, where are you? <laughs> Mr. Oscar Key and Mr. Larry Jones, you continue to lead our Key Club with distinction. We want the members of the Key Club to stand and be recognized. The coaches for our quiz team. We recognize you and recognize the members of the quiz team for their outstanding work, for working with commitment and diligence. And I'm going to be inviting the members of the quiz team to stand and be with the Because it's either we did that or we were going 
went on sale. And Glenmuir is excellent. And we knew that we had to do everything that we should to ensure that we stayed on top and demonstrated excellence. Many of us had to do what was uncomfortable to survive this academic year. We were forced to do the things we thought we couldn't do or what we said we wouldn't do. As students, I know there are many times you felt like not doing an SBA, not studying hard enough for a test, but then again, you are excellent. And uh, it demands great work, it demands sacrifice. Even if you're going to ball, slam the fridge door, lock out everybody, you knew that you had to do the uncomfortable things in order to do that. Some of us had to be vaccinated. If you're anything like me, it took a lot of courage for them to pierce me with that needle. Some of us laugh the eye tight, scream out, boy! But we had to take the vaccine because we wanted to keep ourselves safe and to keep others safe. The next one is put can be a without fire. We continue to experience the iceberg theory where most of what we do is not visible to many. We see the plaques, the awards, the trophies. We see the posts on Facebook. We listen to the announcements at general devotion, at price giving. But many times we do not stop to think about what made all of this happen. Anything that we want to achieve requires hard work. It requires diligence. It requires a lot of sacrifice. Mrs. Peterkin, coordinators, form teachers, they may see you as being miserable, as being pushy, as being harassers. Mr. Edwards, Mr. Richards, you would have them sit at your office just to get something out of them. And now, I know that they're saying to themselves, it was worth it after all. Nothing good comes easy. And finally, the bigger the fish, the more fire they take. The bigger the fish, the more fire they take. As I said before, at Glenmuir, excellence is our mantra. We are a great school. The recently published Orlando Patterson report ranked Glenmuir High School as the number one school in the country. But guess what? The reward 
reward for great work is more work. And a part of that is, it comes with greater responsibility and it demands greater support. So I know that many of you see us as we're always begging. And that will not stop, it will increase because the vision is big and we need support to live the vision. Your students are here for a purpose. And we want to ensure that we continue to do our best to deliver. I am going to be using this platform to start the begging.
and trouble take you, pick the shot with you. It's about pivoting and innovation. Couldn't come big without fire. I never heard that one before. Nothing great can be accomplished without great and at times unreasonable effort. Nothing good comes easy. The bigger the fish, the more fire it takes. The reward for great work is more work. Push, press, persevere. Challenges represent opportunities. Effort in excellent, excellence out. Be a world changer. Thanks again. All right. At this time, we're going to have some special presentations. The Glenmere High School Spirit Award from the Glenmere South Florida Fast Student Associate and the Glenmere Fast Student Association, Glenmere South Florida Fast Student Association Achievement Award. Mr. Melbourne, please come up. Rather, 
the church, its immediate members, and members of the wider community within the cure in which he is assigned. In observing him over the 27 years he spent at St. Gabriel's, I saw priests who had interest in nation building activities. So he was seen working and making his contribution to the education sector, serving on Anakin School Boards as member, vice chairman, and a chairman. At this institution, he served at all three levels during his approximately 28 years on the board. Archdeacon Winston Thomas took over the chairmanship of Denver's Board of Management in 2015 and served in that capacity until March of this year when he resigned. During the period as chairman, he did very well at moderating and moderating, and let me say that again, the cut and thrust in the boardroom. And if you understand how the boardroom works, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, Chairman Winston Thomas was one who made himself available to attend most, if not all, of the school's function to which he was invited. Those of us who served on the board during his tenure found him to be organized and one who was a stickler for, for time and accuracy. Mr. Chairman, during Archdeacon's chairmanship of the board, we had improvement to the school's physical plan. The facelift given to the Sydney Scott Auditorium, this auditorium, is an example. And while it is fair to say others have contributed, we should know that it was during his tenure that Glenmuir High School was ranked as the number one school in Jamaica. So, Archdeacon, on behalf of Mr. Patrick Hilton, our chairman, other board members, Dr. Marsha Smalling, her management team, academic, and all other members students, parents, guardians, and the church. I say thank you for the years that you have contributed and served this institution, Henry or Please accept this gift. He served for 28 years, so Dr. Smalling can take a little time to fix that. We would not have so much access to him, so thank you so much for allowing him to serve us for so many years. At this time, very quickly, I am going to be inviting our heads and deputies. I'd like to make a personal presentation to them, so I invite them to come very quickly. Please move with alacrity. And then after this presentation, we're going to be inviting Mrs. Marjorie Manning, who is representing the James and Friends Education 
Foundation. One of our partners actually paid for the CSEC fee, the CXC fees for approximately 20 students and have donated approximately $1.5 million this academic year to assist students in purchasing their meals and for transportation. So put your hands together for the kids. Leaders are readers. I am an avid reader and I know that many of them are avid readers too. Our head girl is actually an author and so I thought I would give to them with this book that I have read and I have found useful, illogical, say yes to a life without limits. Thank you so much, leaders, for the great work that you have done. You started off late online, which of course would have um, given you less, uh, less opportunity to really serve us, but you came out, you show, and you show out, and you've been very diligent. So I hope that you will find this book extremely useful. Based upon his performance, 
performance, he will get the sponsorship for the overseas travel program. If he continues to perform well, he might just get the university scholarship too. Okay, now this other student, ladies and gentlemen, this other student, she is our youngest sponsor in the foundation. Can you imagine? Our youngest sponsor. Now this young lady has sponsored a student who attends the Denby High School and she has given that child a scholarship for five years for $400,000. Can you imagine? Saved out of her lunch money and sponsored a child. Come on and give it up for this student. at the time GSAT passed at the Cross Primary and Junior High School. The foundation this evening will be presenting a trophy to this student saying to her, thank you for that which you have done, the sacrifice that you've made, we totally appreciate it. That student is Anya Amy. Thank you very much. I also, so 
for touching and so inspiring, right? You agree? Thank you so much for those who contribute to the school, those who contribute to our community, to our society. It's what makes us a better place, better for all of us. Both the, those who receive the contributions as well as those who contribute. So at this stage, we are going to have a selection by the, the school choir. Yes? Thank you.
listen to yes. them online. Our beautiful goddess mommies, well wishers and guardians, pleasant afternoon. The task is mine to introduce our guest speaker. Our guest speaker proudly proclaims that he is originally from St. Catherine, but his ordained journeys have taken him to St. Elizabeth, where he currently works and resides. He has been a priest since 1995 and now serves in the Black River Corps as well as assist with three additional churches in the Balaclava Corps. His substantive role, however, is with the Jamaica Consumer Force as assistant chaplain in Area 3. We think that all these vacations are perfect for our mentor, who has a passion for working with and helping persons of all ages fulfill their potential. He is married to Janet, who is an educator, and they have three children, Jamoy, a teacher, Janet, a nurse in training, and Daniel is about to graduate from Oklahoma College. Reverend Tolo, who is a warm and caring individual, has a great sense of humor and he speaks the language of young people. He therefore fits right into our graduation ceremony this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, I give you Reverend Carlton Tolo. One of the things about introduction that you want me sometimes, I put him a talk about those are. But the recognition of the chairman, board chairman of this localized school, uh, Mr. Patrick Hilton, and the principal, Dr. Marsh Smalley. Of course, our chaplain, Silva, Sister Alba, and Archdeacon, retired, a person who had guided me over the years, and Thomas. Of course, we have the representing the Costas, Dr. Simu, and how could I not remember? I do make a fancy of the report. Representative, Mr. our superintendent, Robert Walker, and all the other distinguished yes. guardians, parents, but the valedictorians, graduates. Wow! It is so good for me, and I consider it a privilege to be part of this, this journey. And to hear that you are number one school in Jamaica, I tell you, just that news alone, I was wondering, I don't need to say anything, because that is enough. You being the number one school in Jamaica, said it all. Still, today is a big step towards your future and we are proud of you graduates we are happy for you you have completed high school amidst the COVID-19 pandemic that has resulted in the fatality of many of our loved ones. You, your life, experience disruption, stress, and uncertainty because of that pandemic. Still, you have shown great fortitude. Your school is number one. Yeah, your school is number one. In spite of the pandemic, your school is number one. You have overcome the unexpected. 
you have persevered, and I can dare say that you are overcomers. Your accomplishments are even more impressive. Some of you have grieved the death of loved ones, and some of you became ill due to the virus. Still, your enthusiasm, your devotion to your studies are commendable and inspiring. This experience truly has made make you a more competent, resilient, empathetic, and a trusted citizen of Jamaica, the land we love. For the, from the first day you entered Glenmuir, and you know, I was out in the public square of Maven, and somebody said, it is not a high school, it is a university. Yeah. So, if the public is saying it, then maybe it is so. And then you are number one, maybe I will be true. So yes, I have no doubt, from the day you entered this institution, you are striving for greatness. So I say to you this afternoon, this evening, continue to strive for greatness. Someone said, the heights of great men reach and get, were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were upward piling through the night. We are proud of you. Continue to strive for greatness. To the administrative, uh, to the administration of Glenmuir, Dr. Smalley, the principal, and her faithful and commendable staff. For several years, you have been investing knowledge, wisdom, and understanding into these beautiful valedictorians. And I'm sure you all beaming with joy for your labor had not been in vain. No doubt you were anxious during the period of the, uh, I would say during the period, as you wrestled with the pandemic. You are navigating your way through, adopting new ways of educating and administrating. You have done so. So congratulations to the administration, to the board, to the staff, to all persons of this great institution. The Ministry of Education has invested and has outlined policies and priorities that has made your graduates great from you through the child to adulthood. These policies include bridging the digital divide, lifelong learning, information and communication, quality education and training, parental support, and child and youth development, among other burning zeal for truth policies. And we know what burning for truth, with zeal for truth mean, right, brothers? You would have known it. I can't say the language that you say in, but I've seen it on your sign over there. Your institution has embraced the policies of the Ministry of Education, and now you are school number one. We can therefore say that these graduates are rich in knowledge of their communities, environment, socio-political culture, and all the governing institutions of Jamaica, the land we love. I do believe that you will inspire and make humanity what God intended for humanity to be. Glenn, you have cultivated minds that are strong, you have cultivated minds that are not afraid to make mistakes. You have cultivated 
cultivated minds that are willing to speak up. You have cultivated minds that are willing to step up and not just speak up, but speak out. Willing to change things for the better. Minds that are not only the dreamers, but doers as well. You saw how the youngsters played the getting drum a while ago. They are not just dreamers, they are doers. We say to you, Bradley, when faced with oppositions, adversity, and adversaries, remain focused and persevere towards your goal. What this is said, all dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. All dreams can come true. Your achievement will prove your greatness and how right you were to make this institution, Glenview High School, your alma mater. A few months ago, when I live in St. Elizabeth, I was said, I watched some farmers, yes, I watched some farmers planting seeds in the ground. These seeds, these seeds, yes, would have started growing on the ground. We see them, but these seeds started growing underground but it don't stay on the ground over time these seeds will push their way through the earth to find the light of the world above and that is who you are the seeds that came to Glenmuir and now you are looking at the world above. Conrad Hilton said, success seems to be connected with action. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. With hard work and dedication, you will find success. Don't shy away from hard work. But then I don't need to say that to you because you could not be lazy and be number one. Don't you agree? You can't, you couldn't, it's not possible. So don't, let me not even say don't shy away from hard work. I believe that you're hard workers. Be spontaneous and creative. Be prepared for the opportunities that will present themselves to you and don't, and don't be afraid to experiment. Many graduates have thrown away their books after leaving college. I remember, um, and this was long before we had high schools and all those things. We were youngsters. I remember when we reached grade 9, I, I remember sitting in the back and looking at some persons that the principal said, you're old school now. And I remember seeing a young man roll up his book and put him in his backpack and walk out. And that was it. Strive. Move on to higher learning. Let learning be a lifetime ambition. Remember, one of the Ministry of Education policy is about lifelong learning. So, valedictorians, always labor for learning. For learning is better than silver and gold. Silver and gold, Bill. But a good education never decay. Changes in life will come as you journey to greatness. Don't resist change. Accept them and use them to chart your path to greatness. Circumstances in life have placed some people at a disadvantage. Remember, never give up. 
And for those around you who are at a disadvantage, where it is possible, show kindness. Raise them up. Provide a light for them to see. Remember what our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said. The one who is great among you must be the what? The servant of all. Make us proud. Be known for positive change. Wherever you find yourselves, graduates, look back at where you're coming from and remember the hope, the love, the faith, and the trust investing in you. Guess what? Glenier wants to know that you excel. Today, we're all saying we are proud of you. As you strive for greatness, don't forget to tell your teachers thanks and your parents that you love them. Don't forget to let them know how grateful you are for all the support that they have given you. Be proud of them. Let them know. Tell them in public. Tell them in front of your friends. Let everyone know of, of the love you have and how thankful you are for your teachers, for your parents, your guardians. They have made some serious sacrifice. Words can never express the depth of their selfless sacrifice, the sacrifice that they have willingly made for you to be successful people, for you to be great, for you to strive and to reach higher heights. They have made for sacrifice. Never forget to respect them, to show them appreciation. And then your parents, Parents, we know that raising children in an unstable and confusing world can be very challenging. The norms that we had when we were growing up is different from the norms of today. And we have to be navigating them through this world. But today, your dreams, your work, your hope, and efforts are materialized. Here are your children graduating, valedictorians, an honor roll, being awarded against all the other parents, guardians. You have done well. Against all the Financially, medically, socially, culturally, emotionally, and spiritually, your children are graduating. You would have known their experience. You would have recalled the moment you held your child and the joy, the hopes, and the challenges you had. You would have known them. You have raised them to strive for greatness. And here we are today, an honor Well done, parents. Well done. Don't be afraid to tell them that you are proud of your achievements. Show them that you genuinely, genuinely care by showing pride in their achievements. Continue to insist and to instill moral values and attitudes in them so that they will be persons of sound character. Be careful. Please ensure that they are not involved in crime and violence. Many persons, families and relatives, ignore the lawful practices of their loved ones. But you should remember 
that when they are involved in a crime, crime of violence, it will affect you too. Parents and godless friends, there is no safe cabinet in a sinking ship. There is no safe cabinet in a sinking ship. Stay away from crime and violence. I am not judging anyone, given the social, cultural, political, and technological influences. For at the end of the day, the parents and the members, we know we are the ones who cry. Parenting can be difficult. I am a parent. And one day I was at home, and my two boys were in their room talking, and then I, I heard them start like, yo, dad. Yes, my dad. So I said, wait, I went with my dad, and I went with you. I mean, <laughs> I am a priest. Assistant police, not for um, chaplain of police. A JP, a married, and I have two dogs in a house. <laughs> well, thank God you are no longer dogs. I had to carry it. <laughs> so, yes, I know that the influence is out there, and they're going to come home with it. So, parents, when they come, meet them and let them know your values your attitude, and remember to point them to greatness. Show them greatness. Be patient with them. Remember the phrase um, that we were taught, when you're young, the tie our heart. When you're old, are older. No, when you're young, the tie our legs. When we are older, the tie of our hearts. And so, yes, I'm sure you will be worried you now. Now that, then, you know, there is this question when people are leaving school. So now that you're leaving school, what you gonna do? So I, I know the anxiety of parents. Now, graduates, valedictorians, today you are leaving this institution you have many friends. As you go from here, you will make new friends. But guess what? Be careful of the friends you select. Careful of the company you keep. You could not choose the family you were born in, but you can choose the friends you keep. You can choose, so choose them Carefully, there is a gem that said, show us your friends. Oh, I don't need to know you. You have said it for me. <laughs> show us persons who are of good character, persons of wisdom, over those who possess the position of power or popularity. Many with the get-rich mentality will go to unlawful extremes to gain wealth without regard to the persons they are hurting. Walk away from evil. Don't be overcome with the lust for money and power. Plan your life. Take the opportunities that come. Work smart. Work hard. Be honest. Remember, in your striving for greatness, Horace Green says, fame is vapor, popularity an accident, and riches takes wings. Only one thing endures, and that is character. Now, graduates, let me ask you, what are you going to do for your country? Former President of the United States of America, President Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Get involved in the development of your country. 
starting from your communities. Offer your skills and competence. You know, every week we interview persons who wants to join the Jamaica Constabular Force. And one of the questions we ask them, how involved are you in your community? And certainly, we would ask, how involved were you at school? And since I said that, I can clearly say that the Jamaica Constabular Force is on a recruitment drive. Doctor, will you take all of them? <laughs> if they're with that neighbor, we will take the whole 200 of them if you will let them come to us. There are many other institutions that need you, and I'm sure we'll be seeking after you. Make yourself available. Make your country that place that we, are, we, we hope it will be, the 2030 vision, a place to raise, biz, raise family, do business, work, and worship, of course. Let it be that place. Now, valedictorians, these noble institutions, Lastly, I prepared you for tertiary level institution, education, and the working world, and you have been successful. Go forth into the world. The sky is the limit. We are proud of you. Someone said, walk over every mountain one step at a time. We are all looking forward to hear of your future successes and accomplishment. Strive for greatness. Go forth with God. The world's await. Go forth with God. The time is now. Go forth with God. Your feet are set. Go forth with God and find his joy. Glory shall shine about your road. Great heart if you go forth with God. Continue to strive for greatness. Thank you.
recognition and awards. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the graduating class of 2022. I can't hear you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Max Leiber.
Kingdom Richards. Oh, 
Jada Clark.
Mark Grant. Crystal Mc. 
Rihanna McMahon. Chloe Miller. Daniela Miller. Celine Mohammed. Ray Morse. Come on, Molly Lisa. Police Mullins.
Kevon Smith. Sasha Smith.
Good evening, distinguished guests, administrators, teachers, parents, friends, mentors, and of course, the graduating class of 2022. to commemorate the memories and accomplishments of our great class. My fellow graduates, today is a defining milestone in our lives. I can say with pride that we have proven to ourselves, our teachers and parents, that we are the most resilient students in the history of Glenmere High School. made us stronger as it forced us to attend classes virtually for not just one year, but three years. Our third course, fourth form, and part of our fifth fourth years. High school undoubtedly taught us how to handle the triumphs and trials of life. Therefore, on this momentous occasion, I commend the class of 2022. But every child can learn, and every child must learn. They were definitely correct, because throughout our high school journey, we have learned. We learned to make the right choices that contributed to the individuals we are today. That is why today we dress like wizards and collect our school leaving certificates. But before you all, when Guardian Gabiosa run out of here and into the real world, I want to reminisce on the last five years of what I call the Glen Muir experience. Can you believe it? Five years ago, we walked through the gates of Glen Muir High School for the first time, welcoming the unknown. As innocent first formers, we had to juggle 17 subjects, choose our friends wisely, and discover our place in the Glen Muir community. We discovered which teachers were scary, which teachers were funny, which teachers were downright boring, and which teachers were simply amazing. Like magic, the first form year disappeared and we became second formers. During our second form year, on September 15, 2018, we commemorated Glen Muir's diamond anniversary. The streets of Maypen were flooded with maroon as students, both past and present, Jubilatively celebrated 60 years of excellence in true millennial style. Fellow, fellow graduates, we were a part of a proud moment. We entered third form with optimism, but the world had other plans for us. Every generation experiences at least one event I would later define them. For our grandparents, it was Jamaica's independence. For our parents' generation, Nothing really happened. <laughs> but for our generation, it was the COVID-19 pandemic. Our lives drastically changed. Friendships were abruptly cut short. Extracurricular activities were cancelled. And school as we knew it came to a halt. And to those of you who had siblings like myself, it was not just torture, but sheer agony as we had to spend time with them at home. <laughs> We were presented with a choice, being consumed by the depressing news and restrictions associated with COVID-19, or to rise from the ashes like a great phoenix, burning with the zeal for truth. We chose the latter, of course, because we are the linear writers, and we are expected to pop, produce optimal performance, am I right, Dr. Smalley? <laughs> School took a whole new look from behind the screens of our online devices. Some hated it. Others loved it because they were able to attend school in their pajamas while relaxing in bed. Am I, am I right in real? We had less face-to-face -face interactions, 
that the bonds we cultivated never fail. We bonded over the amazing accomplishments of our fellow classmates. COVID-19 did not dampen our drive to excel in extracurricular activities. Our exceptional netballers, footballers, track stars, basketballers, and cricketers gave us something to celebrate. There was a sense of unity in each and every club, and I've come to realize that it's our Glenmere spirit, a burning zeal that allows us to have such intense connection with each other. In October 2020, we officially became our schoolers. We did less subjects, but the work was more demanding. And we had to do this crucial year from the confines of our homes. As the fourth form year progressed, our mental health went up and down at the school wide life.
Ladies and gentlemen, fellow candidates, please. It was Robert Ruff, business education and technology consultant, who aptly stated that gratitude and attitude are not challenges, they are choices. I have chosen to have the attitude to share gratitude. Therefore, on behalf of the graduating class of 2022, it gives me immense pleasure to extend gratitude to all participants and guests who have graced this joyous evening with their presence. Today is a monumental day in the lives of everyone present in this auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a historic graduation ceremony where the maroon flag flies high, symbolizing the fire which endlessly burns in the heart of each and every graduate seated in this auditorium. First, we must begin by thanking the Most High God who has kept us safe through all the struggles we have faced, whether it was the pandemic, stress, or any academic related problems. He brought us through it all unscathed, and that is a testament of all of us being here in good health. So thank you, Lord, for making this evening possible. I would also like to acknowledge the Chairman of the Board of Management, Mr. Patrick Hilton, for having participated in this evening's celebration. School Chaplain, Sister Alvary Roberts, popularly known as Sister Jen, is most appreciated for offering spiritual guidance all throughout her academic journey. Sincere gratitude to our guest speaker, the Reverend Carlton Tosh. We are going into the big wide world to spread our wings and we are sure you, sir, that we will treasure your wise and profound words as we continue to strive for excellence. To the very special ladies who graciously handed out your certificates and awards to us, I salute and thank you for making us feel special and appreciated on our historic day. I must also extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those who diligently guided us through a five-year tenure at the end. Our principal, Dr. Marcia Small, must be thanked for her excellent job in managing and directing this prestigious institution in the right direction. Her superb guidance and encouraging words always driven us to pop, produce optimal performance. We must also express our gratitude to the various heads of departments and teachers for their vital contribution to our growth. Special thanks to our top tier form coordinators, Mrs. Graham Wright and Mrs. Their commitment to us throughout this year will not go without recognition. We salute and thank you. We cannot forget our guidance counselors, school nurse, dean of discipline, administrative and library staff who have motivated and supported us on our delivery journey. A special thanks. A special thank you is also extended to the auxiliary staff who worked hard to ensure that our learning environment was kept clean and maintained to produce an optimal environment for us to thrive for excellence. The choir must also be commended for an awesome performance. Special thanks to the very talented Javian Grant, fellow Glenmere student who choreographed the evening's entertainment. Well done. <laughs> the security team must also be commended for keeping us safe. An honorary mention is also extended to the staff of Juicy for providing us a delicious place to be How Riga we felt walking through the school gates under the beautiful decorated school grounds, cameras flashing as we smiled and waved like a superstar we are. So I extend my thanks to all decorators and photographers who made this possible. 
and now to our loving parent, guardians, who have been our loudest champions. Your love and support have enabled us to stand here today. Thanks for the numerous sacrifices you all made in order for us to succeed. Finally, the stars of today's show, my fellow graduates. This journey is meaningless without you. Thank you, Glenmere High School graduating class of 2022, my comrades, my friends, for making these years so memorable and meaningful. Our bond has created the zeal to push each other towards success as we embrace challenges and focus on our dream goals. Let us continue to produce optimal performance. In closing, I pass on the flag and star to the next generation of aspiring learners who will undoubtedly follow in our footsteps as we have followed in those of our predecessors. We will continue to blaze a trail of excellence as we proudly proclaim flag run for that studio.
for a photograph right now. Thank you. Parents, you may go. Thank you so much for joining us. Winner.